It's the age-old question in virtual reality. Which is the best solution to connect your VR headset to your PC, a link cable, or virtual desktop? I always answered this question with another question. Are you into sim racing, flight, or space sims? If so, then use a link cable. For everything else, use virtual desktop. Simple, really. However, since the release of version 1.34.2 for virtual desktop, this may no longer be the case. This update introduced a raft of new settings including adaptive quantization and two-pass encoding which virtually eliminates any compression artifacts, a long-running bugbear for DisplayPort users to not use wireless game streaming, plus the field of view tangent sliders, FOV stencil and boost game priority settings, not to mention VDXR which is Virtual Desktop's own open XR runtime and can bypass SteamVR allowing you to squeeze a bit more performance out of your rig. So I have invested a lot of time optimizing my link cable settings using the MetaLink app in conjunction with the Oculus debug tool to get the optimum performance. Then I have tweaked virtual desktop using the PC streamer app in conjunction with the in-app streaming tab settings to do the same. I will break down each decision I have made regarding these settings then run a test using four very different games to appraise the performance. Then I will make a definite decision at the end in my conclusion. So make sure to stay till the end of the video for that. This video is broken down into five sections. One, my PC link and Wi-Fi setup. Two, virtual desktop settings. Three, MetaLink and Oculus debug tool settings. Four, game testing with direct comparison. And five, my conclusion, which is based on my results. I have put chapters in the video so you can jump to wherever part is most interesting to you. I will be concentrating on my Meta Quest 3, but most settings will be relevant for Quest 2, Quest 3S, Pico 4 and Pico 4 Ultra. My setup. Big Bertha is running a 12th gen i9 CPU and RTX 4080 GPU, 64 gig of DDR5 RAM on an ASUS Z790P motherboard. For virtual desktop, I'm using my TP-Link Archer AXE 5400 setup as an access point on the 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6E band. This router is dedicated to virtual desktop to optimize the wireless connection with no interference. The wireless transfer rate is 2.4 gigabits per second. All footage was recorded internally on the Quest headset so that I could capture the virtual desktop performance overlay in real time. For MetaLink, I'm using the Inui 5 meter high speed transfer cable with integrated charging dongle, which when tested gave a bandwidth of 2.5 gigabytes per second on a USB 3 connection. To capture the performance HUD, I used Oculus Mirror, then recorded gameplay with OBS. <gasps> For reference, MetaLink measures latency via app motion to photon latency and virtual desktop measures latency by total motion to photon latency. So there may be a discrepancy due to the different approaches. Plus, all SteamVR settings are on default so that performance is not affected by outside sources. Virtual desktop. This is not a virtual desktop tutorial. If you want to know how to install and set this app up, please go here first then come back when you're up and running. Now, open the PC Streamer app, go to options and copy my settings, which are optimized to give the best performance with my current setup. Preferred codec AV110 bit for Quest 3. Tick adaptive quantization and two pass encoding. Set open XR runtime to VDXR, then copy all my settings on the right side. For all you keyboard warriors out there, the developer of Virtual Desktop has stated on many occasions that automatically adjust bitrate should be on. This is his app. I trust him, so make sure this is ticked. Go to the advanced tab. Set the horizontal FOV tangent to 85% and the vertical FOV tangent to 70%. This setting reduces the number of pixels your headset must render and massively increases performance with almost no visual impact. Leave FOV stencil and boost game priority unchecked for now. You can go back and play with these settings later if you want to mess about, but don't worry, you can't break virtual desktop. If at any point it all goes a bit wrong, just hit the reset to default button here. Open the app in your headset, go to the settings tab. Don't worry about any of these settings. They are only for your desktop, but uncheck use optimal resolution. This is a recommended setting, but I run twin monitors and it screws up my displays. Now, 
Go to the streaming tab and this is where the most important settings are. VR graphics quality high. This gives the closest resolution to the Quest 3's actual resolution. VR frame rate at 90 FPS. We will run Pistol Whip at a 120 FPS, but leave it on 90 for now. Synchronous Space Warp disabled. Snapdragon game super resolution off. This isn't needed on the higher resolution settings. Video buffering off. This introduces too much latency for my liking, but if you get bad stuttering, try it on. Increase color vibrance off. This makes dark areas way too dark for me, but leave increased video nominal range on. I have the performance overlay checked to keep an eye on my frame rate, latency, and where my PC is getting bottlenecked. All these settings are personal choice and are from hours of fine tuning to get the best from my setup. By all means, change things up or down to suit your PC. And remember, if it all goes wrong, just hit the reset to default button here. MetaLink. If you don't already have it installed, you will need the MetaLink app. There is a link in the description, so go download it, install it, and set up your headset. Once that is done, you will also need the Oculus Debug tool, which is part of your link download. On my PC, it is here. See Program Files, Oculus Support, Oculus Diagnostics, Oculus Debug tool. For ease of use, I would recommend you make a desktop shortcut or pin these two apps to your taskbar for convenience. Most important thing to do first is go to Settings, General, and set the OpenXR runtime to MetaQuest Link. Next, go to Devices, click on your headset, go to Graphics Preferences, select the refresh rate. You can change this depending on what game you're playing, but for now, set it to 90 hertz. Again, we will be upping this to 120 for Pistol Whip later. Rendering resolution next, and this depends on your headset. For MetaQuest 3 that I am using, the per eye resolution is 2064 by 2208 for each panel. So set this to 4128 by 2208. You can set this higher if you want, have a play around and see how your PC handles a high resolution. But for this test, I am setting it to the default Quest 3 resolution. Now, Open the Oculus Debug tool and please don't be intimidated by the bewildering list of options. It is straightforward and I'll go through each of the important settings for you. Copy my settings as you see in this screen grab. You will notice that most options are off or disabled. This is because I don't want anything out of my control to interfere. So, for example, asynchronous space warp is disabled because this can cause unwanted shimmering and reprojection. Click the little box next to the FOV tangent multiplier and input 0.85 horizontal and 0.7 vertical. This matches the FOV tangent slider settings we have in virtual desktop. Distortion curvature on low, video codec on H.264 so that we can pump the encode bitrate up to 900 megabits per second. Encode dynamic bitrate off, link sharpening normal, and for visible hub, I want the performance overlay. Now, this is where Oculus Debug Tool becomes a bit of a pain in the ass. It will not remember your FOV tangent multiplier whenever you shut it down, and sometimes it will turn asynchronous space warp to auto. So please be aware. Another annoying thing is that even though it will remember you want the performance overlay on, it won't turn it on till you select it again. I don't know why. The games. I will be playing Into the Radius 2, which is currently in early access, but is very graphically intense and not 100% optimized yet. So this is a good test. Graphics are all set to the highest possible with 120% resolution just for fun. Arkan Age is one of the most beautiful PC games I have ever played, as well as being a lot of fun. Again, all graphics settings are maxed out. Pistol Whip at 120 FPS for some bullet hell rhythm action. Finally, Le Mans Ultimate with graphics set to ultra across the board. This is one of the most demanding games to play in VR, so is a great benchmark, as well as being a terrific sim racing game. The comparison. Now we're onto the raw numbers. This is Into the Radius 2. On the left, we have the link cable, and on the right, we have virtual desktop. So we'll talk about latency first, and the latency for the link cable is about 60 milliseconds, and on the virtual desktop, it's hovering around 54 frame rate. Now, the frame rate on the link cable is quite unstable, probably going between 70 and 90 FPS, whereas 
on the virtual desktop, it's probably between 80 and 90 with a few dips. Now we have Arc and Age. So again, latency is about 60 milliseconds on virtual desktop. It's pretty rock solid at about 32, 33 milliseconds. Frame rate again on Link is a bit choppy, anywhere between 75 and 90 FPS. Whereas virtual desktop seems pretty stable at around 90 FPS with a few little dips. Now moving on to Pistol Whip, one of my favourite rhythm action games. This is running at 120 FPS and the latency on Link, as you can see, is about 48 milliseconds. On Virtual Desktop, it's pretty rock solid at about 30, 32. Frame rate. Frame rate on the Link cable is rock solid at 120 with a few tiny little dips. Now this is where I was very surprised because Virtual Desktop is going between 90 and 120 FPS, which considering the stylized graphics of Pistol Whip, I was very surprised about. Moving on to Le Mans Ultimate, which I think is one of the most graphically demanding games in VR. So we'll talk about latency first, and with the link cable, the latency is sitting at around 68 milliseconds. With virtual desktop, it's pretty rock solid at about 42, 43 milliseconds. Now, frame rate. As you can see, the frame rate for link cable is basically stuck at 45, which is odd because asynchronous space warp is off. I did double check and I ran the test twice and I got the same results. With the frame rate on virtual desktop, it tanks at about 65 frames per second going past the pit lane. And once you get out onto the Kemmel Strait, it settles down between 70 and 80 FPS, which considering the graphics are all on ultra, I think is pretty good. You may also note that Link Cable has absolutely no performance headroom. It's in the red. Before we get to my conclusion, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We're on the way to 21,000 subscribers. Thanks. Conclusion. Meta have renamed the Link app recently and have improved it, but I still find it somewhat unreliable. Audio crackling occasionally creeps in and sometimes the app just doesn't want to open. The Oculus debug tool needs to be checked carefully and some settings put in again every time you open it but once up and running it performs well plus with the inui cables charging dongle it will keep the headset at 100 percent charge indefinitely virtual desktop is updated and upgraded regularly with brand new features like vdxr adaptive quantization two pass encoding and the brilliant fov tangent sliders my biggest surprise here was that virtual desktop not only matched but quite often surpassed the performance of the link cable, especially obvious in Le Mans Ultimate. My usual conclusion when doing a video like this is to use a link cable for all sim racing, flight or space sims and use virtual desktop for everything else. But now, with all the faffing required with the debug tool and the obvious performance gains, I'd recommend virtual desktop for all your PC VR gaming needs. Yes, 
it is a paid for app at £18.99 in the UK. Yes, you will need a decent battery strap to play for prolonged periods. And yes, you will need a dedicated router to optimize the experience. But on the other hand, I have used this app for over thousands of hours in VR and it just keeps on getting better and better. Plus, if you have bought it within the Meta ecosystem, there's no need to buy it again if or when you upgrade to the latest Meta headset. I know there are a lot of Link fanboys out there who are going to be pointing my settings and saying, you should have set this or that number is wrong, and that's fine. Please remember, this is my setup. I've spent many hours fine tuning and tweaking to get the best performance that I need for the games I play. So be nice and put your must have settings in the comments. Thanks. Well, that's it for today. But as always, I want to know what you think. Do you love your link cable? Are you a virtual desktop fanboy? Or are you PC master race and nothing but DisplayPort is good enough for you? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. If you love this content, please subscribe and join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and early access to most of my content. If you want to watch more content from me, please click here or here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.